we are now ready to talk about object inheritance. So, JavaScript gives you this syntax for um, extending a class where you can write that a rectangle extends a shape. You can see that I'm calling the super, so the, the constructor of shape, and I'm passing 0, 0. And then what I'm doing is I'm declaring the width and the height. So I just want to show you that it does work. Let me print out R1. Just going to comment out the previous definitions. Okay, as you can see, there's a rectangle. And now notice that it inherited the translate from shape. Notice there's no translate method being defined here. Uh, what's happening is that it's defined in shape, which means that it's therefore accessible to rectangle. Uh, and then you have the X and the Y, which are also defined in shape and also appear here, right? And then what I did was I called rectangle and I initialized X and Y with zero because I'm calling super, which in turn calls the shape constructor, which assigns zero to X and Y to, to X. So actually let me print out So I'm going to print out the, see, x is, and y is initi are initialized to 0. And then uh, width and height are initialized to 10 and 20 respectively because I pass 10 and 20 here, which are then passed to here. So width and height signed then here. Okay. Okay, and I talked about translate x and y, it all inherited from shape, and then you can print out, you can call the translate method, of course, since it's available, and translate works as before, so nothing surprising here. So now the question is, how does this work internally? Um, and to be able to talk about that, I actually have to introduce this idea of a special field in uh, JavaScript called underscore underscore proto. And I hope that today you will find that proto is actually quite elegant, or powerful at least, quite expressive. Uh, and it allows you to give the full power of this syntax by uh, just by means of a very simple mechanism, which you will learn uh, following. Okay, so the idea is if you, you can create an object like so. So let, let's start new example. Okay, so new example, what I do here is I can create an animal that has a length and a width, right? And I can define the length and width uh, to be 13 and 7, and then I can make sure, read uh, length, width, and some other field, and of course, everything works as expected, right? Let me print this out and hide this. Okay, if I print console log animal, things should be working as expected, right? Length and width. Food doesn't appear there. Next, what I can do is I can define another object called dog. And now notice what I did. I have this special field called underscore underscore proto, and I assigned animal to it. Okay, and now notice what happens when I do console, console log dog. When I print out dog, it only shows true. Um, however, I've defined proto, so where is proto? Proto is a special field of any JavaScript object. Uh, and it's the mechanism behind inheritance. So when you, you add proto, what you're doing is you're linking the dog to the animal. Okay, so in this case, it tells you that all the fields of animal will be available to dog by means of this field proto. So if I do dog barks, it's defined because, 
so it's passing right if i do print uh, console log dog barks right and i can do dog dot barks dog barks is true right because i've defined barks but now notice that i can also give dog length Dog length is 13, right? And if I change this to 130, dog length is 130. So what happened here was it, when you do, when you look up the field length, it first goes to dog. Dog is, didn't define it. So then it goes up to proto and then it finds um, that it's assigned to 130 and returns that. Okay, so there's this, connection going on between a dog and an animal via proto. Okay, here you say that dog, the proto of dog is animal. Okay, or the parent, if you will. So finally, I can create a lab, a Labrador, which is a kind of dog. I can say that a Labrador is a kind of dog uh, that now redefines the field length to be two. And now notice what happens. Lab length is lab length. Okay. Lab length is two because I redefine it. However, lab width is two because Wait, wait, it's not two, it should be 10, seven. It's seven because it came from dog. Dog, the width is seven. And we know that dog, the width is seven because it came from animal or width is seven. So you can see that here to obtain the width to be seven, it had to go through dog. So via proto, you go to dog. So it's not defined here. So then we look up proto and we see dog and we go to dog. See if the length is defined there. It's not. So we go up to animal. Length is uh, the width, sorry. And then we finally get to animal. Width is defined to be seven, and that's what we return. Okay, so the proto field is a very powerful one. It allows us to connect these objects, right? And then uh, object lookup must respect it, must respect this linkage, right? So, f so a lab only defines length. A dog only defines barks. So if you check if a Labrador, Labrador barks, it will because via proto, barks is true. You can check if the, the, lab, the lab width is, in this case, 13. Yes, because it can go through dog and then animal. Okay. And also note that length will override this length. Uh, in the context of lab, but animal length is still th uh, 13. So if we do um, animal, animal width, and we write here animal, it's still 13. So it's not mutating. What you are is redefining something that shadows. So this length shadows the grandparent's length. Okay. Oops. Uh, do, do, do. What I want is length. Right, dog length, and then animal length is 130, whereas the lab, uh, lab length is two. Okay. Good. So, where have we seen this idea where you have maps that are connected via a link of a parent, right? Where the lab, the parent of the lab is a dog and the dog is connected to an animal via proto. Where have we seen this idea where fields are looked up according to this connection, right? We actually talked, we called it a parent, right? Parent connection. So we saw it when we learned about um, how the frames in Racket work. 
right? A frame, you have to have a parent to be able to look up the variables, up the frame, uh, and that's how you get an environment. So this same model that we've learned for uh, Racket, I gave you this example before, and it's also in the SICP book, can actually be written in JavaScript in this way, and it works. It's so I can copy this. So let's do console. H zero, and we do X. H zero dot Y. Then we do the same thing for H one. So I want X, Y, and Z. Then we want to do the same thing for H2. So it defines Y and M, so we want Y, and instead of Z, we want M. I just want to print out high Ds. to put a bit of pretty printing. Okay, there's an assertion that fails somewhere. Which assertion failed? Let's comment this out. Beautiful. Okay, somewhere. I introduced an assertion that failed. Okay, so what we see is that we have x is assigned to three, h zero y is assigned to five, obviously, right? And here, x is assigned to seven, right? Because x is assigned to seven. And then y is assigned to five, y, because y is not defined here, it's defined in the parent where y is five. And z, is assigned to six because Z is defined in H1. And then H2, you have that X is assigned to three because of its parent. So X is assigned to three. And then Y is assigned to two because Y is as assigned here, right? And M is assigned to one because M is assigned in h2 directly and there you go so you can see the exact same mechanism where it looks up the parent that you've learned for environments works as well in javascript however notice that direct access to attribute proto is discouraged and de deprecated in the programming language we're only using it to uh, teach the mechanism behind javascript okay it's not something you should use directly but it does work and it uh, makes the point across. Okay, so ah, finally, the beauty of prototype. So, to make things even more <laughs> uh, interesting, you can define the underscore underscore proto in the following way. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to connect rather than um, defining a method in the underscore like directly like we did before with dot translate in the constructor alternatively we can access its prototype right um, which is related to the underscore proto field so the parent 
which is going to be used uh, to uh, look up fields. And we can assign a method to it. Okay, the idea is how can we, in this way, we are only assigning it once and not every time that we're creating an object. Okay, so this is going to be, become a bit more clear after uh, when we start looking at what's happening behind the scenes. But the idea is that the idea behind JavaScript is that you will have an object that serves as a template, right, where you can define your functions and all that. Uh, and when you create an object at runtime, what's happened behind the scenes is that you're going to take this template and you're going to connect it in the proto field. So you're going to plug that in so that your instances now can look up the template for values. In this case, very useful for prototypes. Because the problem is you don't want to be whenever, you know, in this first version that I showed you, um, this version, the problem is whenever you're creating an object, you're assigning the translate method to it. However, because you can have access to this underscore underscore proto, you can use this connection to the parent. So imagine if you, you just assigned, imagine you have 10 methods, you would have to assign 10 methods every time you create an object, right? So you have to do it n times according to the number of methods. So alternatively, what you can do is instead of doing it n times, why don't you just use the proto mechanism to let it when it, when the the when you want to call a method you do it via proto so you only define in the prototype once all the methods you need and then when the new constructor is created it connects the proto right and then you connects the proto to your template and you use that template to define the methods that's what we're doing here and the name is called prototype because of this connection with underscore underscore proto. So prototype is the template that is used, uh, that is connected to every instance of shape. Okay, so underscore underscore proto will point, point, point to this field. That's the bottom line. Operator new assigns shape prototype to p1 dot proto underscore underscore proto. Okay. Let that sink in. So what's happening behind the scenes? So if you see this code where we're defining a method in, in Proto, what's happening is you're creating, you have a Lambda, right? That is creating an object that takes the this. This is the, everything in, in directly what's going on, right? You wanna see, if you wanna understand directly what's going on, even with the prototype field assignment behind the scenes, what's happening is what is shown in this slide. So what we're doing is first we're defining the constructor as a Lambda that takes three parameters. First one being the object that you're uh, allocating or creating. So when you call a proto, the only difference here is this assignment. Everything else we already seen. But now notice that we are assigning to shape another field because shape is a Lambda and Lambdas are objects, so you can assign things to it. So in this case, we're assigning a special field called prototype, right? And in this case, we initialize it with an empty map. So that happens behind the scene just by declaring um, a function. So you're, you're defining this Lambda and by default, you're initializing your prototype to be empty. But then because we assign something to it, it's being assigned to this prototype, okay? And finally, what we're gonna do is we're going to call p1 equals, and instead of passing an empty object as we've seen before, we want to initialize this object with the field proto to be assigned to whatever was assigned to shape.prototype. Okay, so that you can have this template, which is the shape.prototype, already connected to every instance. So that now notice that the constructor only defines x and y, right? And I can still call p1 because I do it via proto. Okay, hope that's clear. So what we're gonna learn in this module is really how to take this version that is very high level, and this version translate into, can be seen more low level as this version, exactly the same code, and finally as this version, which is the code you're gonna generate. 
So what the what the programmer wants to see is this, right? But as a language implementer, what you want to see is this. Why? Because everything is very simple. You simply have a lambda and assignments, and that is it. There's no more magic. I mean, there is the magic of proto that you do have to implement. But the whole objective is, if you, if you think about implementing programming languages, you want to make them as simple as possible to implement while giving the most benefit to the programmer as possible. So you really need to have this idea of um, syntactic sugaring, where you, you provide high-level constructs that can be simplified and lowered down to simpler primitives that are very easy to implement and can be done e efficiently as well. Ideally, you want to have the cake and eat it. So, when you define a class, a constructor, and a method, you, you can see that as defining a function and then setting a prototype for the methods, um, which can be seen in this lower level code. Way more verbose, more opportunities of error, right? So what you want is you want your programmers to use the first version or version three in this slide. Inheritance is the same idea. Uh, the only novelty here is that by default, you wanna call the shape and you wanna set the protocol, the prototype to be, you wanna override it to be the, what are we doing here? So we're saying that the rectangle protocol is initialized Instead of be being initialized with empty, like here, you initialize with, uh, to the parent prototype. Here, what we do is we initialize uh, to an object that is connected to rectangle, and rectangle must be connected to uh, shape. So you do the extension also via proto. So you use proto for two things. Firstly, you use it for, um, to define methods so that you can only set them once and you have this template that is connected there. And secondly, you use the same uh, prototype to connect it to the, the class you want to extend, which is what's happening here. So rectangle is initialized instead of being initialized with empty. So the, the key point is here. So in shape, because shape doesn't have any parent, doesn't extend anything, you initialize the prototype with an empty uh, map, right? But with rectangle, so which can be seen here, uh, but with a rectangle, what you're doing is you're inheriting from shape. So when you initialize the prototype, you have to initialize it and connect it to the shape's prototype so that you can inherit anything that the shape inherits. Uh, and finally, when you initialize the instance, you have to initialize it with the parent, the, sorry, the prototype of the current class, and it's, this case is rectangle. So then you have the two levels of indirection so that you go first for any method defined at the rectangle level, and secondly to inherit methods that are defined in shape. Yes, and that's basically it. That's in a... That's a bird's eye view of how everything works in, in JavaScript, uh, everything related to object-oriented programming. You've learned about how the inner workings of class definition with methods. Wait, let me show you the slide, which is this one. And you've also learned the inner workings of extending a class. You've seen that everything is powered by this special field called proto. And you've also learned that protos work exactly like the frames uh, that we've learned in our uh, in implementing record. So this idea where you have a frame connected to another frame that eventually to its parent that parent eventually reaches a root, uh, that is exactly how the proto field in objects in uh, JavaScript works as well, which is very handy because you basically already know the mechanism behind uh, JavaScript, which is what I wanted to uh, tell you at the end. So I hope you're happy. I hope you had fun today. Um, and now you know a bit better. This is a this class is a bit dense, so you have to go through it slowly and tr try to understand what's going on from each box to the next. Always knowing that these are all equivalent. It's just a lowering of of semantics to make it more explicit to the implementer, uh, although making it more verbose, of course. So you want a computer to run this. You want the programmer to run this, or to write that. Um, okay, that is it for today.